wanted to talk today a little bit about how we can be a working draft, that we have narratives in our everyday lives and that they're certainly shaped by the thoughts that we come up with, but that they can also be positively sculpted by looking at the stories, telling and retelling the stories of those that we emulate in a spiritual or Buddhist sense. So our spiritual teachers, the Buddha himself. En route to the center where I spend most of my time, I spend time thinking about narratives. And I walk past the New York Public Library. Embedded in the sidewalk are these beautiful brass plaques. And they have literary quotes from different poets and authors throughout time. One of the quotes that really strikes me the most on this topic is the shortest one. I've memorized it as I walk over it, and it goes as follows. The universe is made of stories, not atoms. Again, the universe is made of stories, not atoms. And this is by the poet Muriel Ruckeiser. And it really made me think about all the narratives, all the moments that we thread into our lives that ultimately become themes, that become stories that we tell ourselves. So this topic of how we are working drafts, in a sense, that the stories we tell ourselves, the stories that we step into in practicing um, the path of Buddhism as a collective, as a sangha, that there are many different threads that come together, and that perhaps the stories that we tell and retell ourselves, the stories of our spiritual masters, the story of Buddha that we tell and retell again, that these all have a profound impact on who we become over time, whether we regard ourselves as a success, as a failure, or somewhere in between. So I wanted to touch again on this topic, and first of all, to thank you for being here with me. In a sense, you're paying to me your most valuable asset, your attention. And to use a little bit of financial rhetoric, we say we pay attention. Some people may say you give attention, um, but I'd like to thank you in advance for that, because ultimately we now have a story now that we're taking this time and sharing it together. The very path of Buddhism certainly started from storytelling. Um, it began with, with the oral tradition, it was before writing existed. It, was often, uh, it often started with disciples saying it was told to me as such, or it was said as such, and the Buddha's teachings were then conveyed over generations. It became ultimately the vehicle by which we, here in this day and age, have the Buddha's teachings. So storytelling is something that's deeply embedded in the DNA of our civilization as human beings. If we think about the movies that we watch, the characters that mean something to us, whether they're fictitious, whether they're real, ultimately, as human beings, we make sense of life just as Muriel Ruckeiser said, when we put them into stories. Obviously, the world is not made of just stories. They're made up of atoms and subatomic particles and so forth. But if we give that a little bit of time and allowance, um, I'd like to step more into that. So when we think about how stories come together for ourselves, we might imagine that part of them are thin threads of narrative, moments that we piece together, sometimes the last thought that we had in our mind, the last emotion that really gripped us, that can really shape and color how we view ourselves. On the other hand, there can be thicker swatches of narrative, almost like fabric that we wear over time. And those thicker threads of narratives are maybe themes, different experiences that we come to time and time again. Those thin and thick threads, we might say, weave together into narratives, and ultimately, even to use a psychological term, they become a schemata. They become an undercurrent of patterns, of thought, behavior, and a certain way that we perceive ourselves, for better or worse. In this uh, talk, I'd like to explore, again, how certainly what we think, how we approach our daily moments can be huge but also how we fit into a larger collective, a larger thread of narrative when we practice in a sangha or we, even we ascribe ourselves to a certain thought pattern. Even when we subscribe to a certain teaching or a certain tradition, that there is something we can glean from the telling and retelling of stories of those who have walked the path in various time periods and that they can, in fact, have universal lessons for us here in the time period that we're listening and exploring our own personal narratives.